I'm Dave. And I'm Andrew, and we are the IB English Guys, and today we want to talk about photographs, an important part of our course. Mr. Giles, take us through the preview for today. Yeah, we're going to talk about why we like photographs, we're going to give you some good steps to follow to deconstruct them, and then we're going to talk about specific features of a photograph by looking at a photograph that we really love, and then we'll put it all together and talk about the significance. Mr. Giles, sounds like you got a plan. Now, for our viewers, can you tell us why we think photographs are important for our course? Yeah, I think first of all, visual photographs tell stories. They have narratives and we want to think about the story that's being told. Yeah, another thing that is important is that they are everywhere. They're very important for our course. Whether you're looking at a feature article, an opinion piece, a website, we look at a lot of multimodal text, which means that you will always see text and image together. We need to be savvy and be able to read those images. That's right, great. And lastly, they stir our emotions. They inspire us, they anger us, they make us feel empathy. We want to think about the emotional response that we have when we look at a photograph. Yeah, now Mr. Giles, as an English teacher, sometimes I look at a photograph and I'm not sure where to start. Any advice for this? Yeah, first step in, in looking is, is to look closely and look long. We want to really take in the photograph look at details and really examine that photograph and step back and look. Yeah, once you've examined that photograph in detail, we really believe you need to ask some probing questions. If you look down, students and teachers, you'll see there are many questions that you can ask yourself when exploring image so you can extract the meaning. Yeah, that document is so helpful. And the last thing, we want to put it all together. We want to make an interpretation and we want to think about how this connects to the purpose, how this connects to the audience. And again, what are the implications of this photograph? Yeah, and it, because it's so important, we can't really move to that step until we've really thought carefully and deeply about all the aspects of the photos. Now, Mr. Giles, do we have a mnemonic, perhaps, that can help us deconstruct these yeah. images? It took us a little while, but we have a mnemonic, and we think this mnemonic is really helpful in looking at photographs. So here we go. Colorful fruits like cherries pack good flavor. <laughs> Let me try. Colorful fruits like cherries pack good flavor. Yes. What do you say we take this mnemonic, we look at an image, and we put it all to work? Should we okay. do that? I love it. We're going to take a photograph by Steve McCurry. He's a National Geographic photographer. We love this photograph uh, because we both love India. We also think it's just so evocative. This was uh, made in 1983. Have a look at his work. It's excellent. The C in our acronym is um, stands for composition. And we want to think about composition as how the visual elements are composed and where our eye is directed. One really good technique with composition is the rule of thirds. This is where we take an imaginary tic-tac-toe grid and put it over the image and we think about the four intersecting points. So we're thinking about how our eye is directed. We can also look at vectors and leading lines and how the leading lines of this particular photograph are leading towards that train and that's quite significant. You ever there teach you photography? No, but you're I've pretty learned, good. Yeah. I learned a lot. I think it's yeah. it's fun to it's fun to actually get some terminology. I agree. Uh, of course, the F stands for focus, and you want to think about where is the focal point and how is focus being used in the image. In this particular image, we can see uh, in the foreground, we have the steam engine, uh, and of course, in the background, we see the Taj Mahal, and this is very interesting use of depth of field. Of course, the depth of field is when you a photographer is playing with that f-stop, and they're intentionally blurring out what's in the background so they can keep the foreground in focus. Yeah, really great example in this photograph. Okay, L is light. And again, light is always significant and photographers can manipulate light. In this case, it's a natural light. We see it's also a morning light. That's something we might want to interpret. The lighting, the light, the sunlight is actually hitting the side of that train if you look carefully. And I think that's quite significant. So again, light is again something that, that might be worthy of talking about. Nice. When I think about light too, Mr. Jaws, I like to think about color. And for me, I noticed the red turban on this man in the front of the train that really pulls my attention there. And I can't help but notice sort of this light dark motif we have going here. Of course, the dark aspect in the foreground is the steam engine. Uh, and that's being juxtaposed with the light aspect, which of course is the Taj Mahal in the background. That's awesome. So that color contrast could contrast something else that we'll get to in our interpretation. That's excellent. So P is people and places. And again, the, the, these two men on the train are quite significant. They're working class men that are working on the train. And I think we'd want to talk about that a little bit. The place is also deeply significant. We know this iconic 
uh, uh, location of the Taj Mahal is symbolic of India. We want to think about that as a historic place. Nice. And now that we've identified these people, we want to think about the gaze. In which direction are they looking? And by examining this image, we can see that they are clearly looking off to the left of the frame. Of course, as the viewer of this photograph, we're not sure what they're looking at. We have to imply, and we'll leave that bit for the interpretation. Yeah, that's great. And the last is is framing and cropping. We all know how to edit photographs on, on, on our phones and we've edited lots of photographs. So we want to think about what's in the frame and how perhaps in this particular photograph we notice that this has been framed and cropped in a way that we have the two halves of the photograph to talk about that's part of that contrast and depth of field, but also what's not in view, the rest of the train, the other parts of India that are not being pictured that again are interesting to talk about. All right, Mr. Giles, now comes the hard part in my opinion. Now we've examined the photo, we've looked at it in great detail, we've applied our mnemonic. Now we need to make some meaning. And when we try to make meaning, we wanna think about the audience and the purpose. He always asks me questions too, I notice in these videos. So ask me some questions I'm just let's talk I just about love it. to see what you're gonna yeah, say. Yeah, it's All fun right. to ask questions. Okay, Giles, a question I'd like to ask you to determine purpose and audience is what feelings or emotions do you feel when you look at this image? I am, I'm inspired by the photograph. I see the, also just the motion of the train and I, I, I think it shows um, just an appreciation. So I, I don't know, to me, I'm kind of inspired by the photograph. Yeah, for me, I sort of feel uh, nostalgic. It makes me think about history a little bit and it makes me, you know, it does make me think about the, the legacy of post-colonialism in India. And, and it makes me sort of think back to, to all I've learned historically. And it makes me think about what are they looking off to in the future? Yeah, that's great. Nice. Uh, another question I'd like to ask you, Giles, is, you know, uh, what can we say about the political, cultural, or, you know, the context? What, what would you say about this place politically or... or yeah, well, I think about, first of all, the sort of the rich cultural heritage of India that the Taj Mahal represents. And I think that's, again, the sort of history and the richness of, of India as an incredible place, but also that juxtaposition of something slightly more modern that re might represent that sort of um, post-colonial, um, you know, or legacy of colonialism by the train. And I think that's all, all conjured up in that image. Yeah, and I think about the occasion. I think the, the photographer was probably there early morning, obviously, to capture the sunrise. I think I've done that myself at the Taj Mahal, Mr. Giles. And I, you know, we see him there, and perhaps the occasion for the sunrise, but again, it's that notion of we're looking out. We're looking outward into the future, and we want to think about you know, where is India as a nation, and in which direction are they moving? Are they moving? You know, It looks like, following the leading lines, it looks like they're leaving the train, the steam engine, they're leaving that behind and heading off into something better on the horizon. We, yeah, we can I mean, only hope. And all those things, the gaze, the light, the morning light, all those things perhaps symbolize that idea of like a new beginning and change. Yeah. And again, this is our interpretation, but I think that's really interesting. Let's consider the audience for a moment, Mr. Giles. We know this image was, was formed and, and appeared in National Geographic. What does that imply about the audience? Well, I think it's a, it's a global audience. I think this is, again, a magazine that has a wide readership, but it's also people interested in, in, in other places places and learning about other places and appreciating travel. So again, it's all those things are evocative of, you know, really making the audience think yeah, about Yeah, and of course the hard part, students, we all know, is really putting all this together and trying to come up with an ultimate purpose or a main message of this entire photograph. Of course, this is difficult. Being a multimodal text, it would really help to see the article as well, but we're just looking at the image in isolation and we have to sort of guess and imply what we think the main theme was. What do you think the main idea of this message was, Giles? I think it's about the rich, uh, rich history of India, the complexity of India with the old and the new, the, the sort of post-colonial post legacy that's there, and also just that sort of forward thinking and industrialization. And that's to me what, what, it's, what it shows. Yeah, I agree as well. And I think, you know, we think about the steam engine as really an obsolete piece of technology. It is left over from the British Raj. And we, we see these men, these working men, looking off into the future, looking to the horizon, leaving that legacy of colonialism behind and thinking about all the beautiful possibilities and the, the tremendous future that India has ahead of it. And I think that morning photo with the sun coming up, looking off into the distance, really shows that India is heading in a really positive direction. Yeah, great. Awesome. All all right, folks, uh, we hope this video was helpful for you. We hope it provided some insight on how to read an image. Remember, you need to go through this process of looking closely, looking long, 
asking a series of questions and putting it all together. If you come back for our next video, Mr. Giles, what will our students find? We're gonna look at a body of work from a great uh, Vietnam War photographer and look at that particular photographer's work and try to apply some of them, our mnemonic to these iconic photographs. Yeah. We'll see you next time on the channel, folks. Keep on watching, keep on leaving those comments. Let us know what you want. We're here for you. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys.